Hey guys, welcome to Garage Geeks. My name is Cody Groom, and today we're at Elite Finish. Elite Finish is a detailing shop here in San Diego. They do everything from paint correction to paint protection film to really anything you can name. They also are here with SE wraps and auto armor, so they got everything in one building. But anyways, enough of me talking about it. Let's actually go in and see everything. Coming here, I wanted to know what paint correction actually was. I've heard the term and had a brief understanding of what it actually is, but I wanted to dive into the details and actually understand what's happening during the process. So what actually is paint correction? What are you actually doing to the paint? So paint correction, like the, the broad term that it is, yeah. is basically the process of physically removing scratches. So we're not filling anything yeah. here. So if we, all the damage that you see here when the car leaves, it will be permanently removed because we're gotcha. using, you know, liquid abrasives, compounds, polishes, or, you know, sometimes we're using sandpaper. Yeah. We are physically removing paint from this car at a very microscopic level. Yeah. You know. Because that's uh, something that's always been a little confusing to me yes. trying to understand is that when you're technically removing it, right. but then you're polishing but it. But it's funny because like we are pretty aggressive sometimes yeah but the amount of paint like could be tenths of a mil like gotcha okay regular car like a, a car like this probably has five to six mils worth of paint yeah you know uh and then so there, obviously there's it? like a tenth maybe gotcha of okay. one of those that makes so sense. it's we're very very small amounts that's my biggest priority is leaving as much paint behind because yeah that improves the lifespan of the car itself. Like if I go through and I just buzz down through all this, and this is like glass, like it looks great. Yeah. But then in five years when the sun had its time with it, you know, if you see those cars driving down the street with faded roofs, like yeah. that's exactly what would start to happen. Oh, okay, It would Got start it. to, you know, oxidize that clear coat. The car they were working on today was a Tesla Model X. Jared actually walked me around and showed me that even on a new car, there's a lot of scratches and blemishes straight from the factory. That spot I showed you over there, Yeah. I'm looking for stuff like that that's gonna require more aggressive, um, you know, polishing before I get into my less aggressive process okay. to, that needs to be done on the whole gotcha. car. Okay. You know? okay. At Elite Finish, they have a number of different types of lights. These lights are used to actually see the scratches, and it may sound obvious that you're using lights to see scratches, but some of these put out a specific pattern to make the scratches more visible. This long one here, that's what we call random isolated deep scratch there. Because okay. these are just wash damage swirls, just from wiping the car down. What I'm looking for is the more isolated damage. See these ones here that are kind of yeah. horizontal? That's what I'm talking about. It's just things like that that may require more work than just the swirls. Yeah, gotcha, okay. Yep. So, I mean, on that topic of, yeah. of, you know, swirl marks, is there a way to actually prevent that when washing cars, or is that something that just happens over time? It's tough to say, because there are very safe wash methods, but yeah. it, I will never say that you'll be able to have a perfect car all the time, because there's always a potential. Anytime you touch the vehicle, yeah. you're, you're running the risk of causing damage. Gotcha, okay. But wash damage is so microscopic. Yeah that it's pretty easily corrected. The stuff that we're more concerned about, which is why I was looking for those random defects, that's stuff that a coating can't really protect. So there's no, there's no like foolproof method. Then. No. This is, this is, it's almost like you need to go do paint correction every so many years or something yeah, that, to. Exactly, and I mean, we, we offer services that kind of follow up our initial service. So okay. once the car is perfected and it leaves, you know, it's up to the owner to take care of that car. Gotcha, so whether okay. they take a good care of it or not, like we'll provide them with the skill set and the tools to do it. So I guess I guess my last question before mm -hmm. we actually move into sure. this right here would be, um, you've mentioned a couple times to me while we've been talking, mm -hmm. hard and soft paint. Right. What does that actually mean? Like uh, So, I mean, hard and soft paint, like this, Tesla's I kind of consider like a, they're kind of like a hybrid almost. Okay. They, they cut like they're soft but then okay. they finish like a hard paint. So what that means is like a hard paint, like a BMW, okay. for instance, harder to damage. So Got it. it's good for the owner because once we have it taken care of, it's much harder to scratch this paint than it is. Gotcha, say, but, on the, but on the side for you guys, it being harder also makes it, it harder for you guys. It causes too. more work. It, you know, we have to be Got more it. aggressive. We have to, um, like the products don't work the same as on a soft paint. So if we have, Oof, what did we have in here recently? We had a Range Rover in here. Okay, okay. so normally we don't use foam pads to cut, but the Range Rover has such soft paint, we had we used 
a polish and a foam pad to cut wow. through all the damage on the car. And there's a reason why most Range Rovers on the road nowadays are so destroyed because their paint is so soft. You know, to the point where you could take so, even our nicest towel and wipe like this and scratch it. So uh, for the first step then, we're gonna go through the cutting stage. I'm gonna start compounding this panel, start removing those deeper defects and try to come out with the most crisp finish we can get. So real quick, without mm -hmm. light, so I saw I saw you put the light on. And you said you said you said cool. Yep. But like, what did it? It did exactly what I wanted it to. Okay. Do, you know? Cool. <laughs> exactly what I expected to, which is nice because I know I can carry on through the rest of the car with no worry that it's not going to be doing what I want it to do. So there's a few just other little defects on the corner here where I'm not going to use the big one on that corner because I could easily cause some damage to the corner and edges there. So I'll save that for a smaller machine. Same with this piece here. Then I'm gonna carry on through the bulk of the panel with the same combo and I should have a pretty good finish. So I got the bulk of the panel cut, but there's a few smaller areas that I want to clean up. So instead of running the, the big machine around, like on this corner here, I'll use the three inch where I can just buzz where I need to rather than having so much pad overhang and potentially cause damage there. And as well as this little triangle right here, the big machine, I'd end up running into the chrome here Whereas with the three inch, I can kind of tuck it down under. So I just finished the cutting process. I'm just going over the panel to make sure there's nothing I missed. Um, I'm gonna get it wiped down, inspect it one more time, and then we can move on to polishing. All right, so in this bottle, I have a product called Throwback from Shine Supply. What Jeremy, the owner of Shine Supply, calls it is a paint cleanser. So what we use it for is, in between our cutting and our polishing step, we use it as a liquid that cleans excess oils off of the paint so that we can actually see what the true finish after cutting is. Because during the cutting cycle, there's oils in the polishes. Those oils get kind of worked into the scratches in the car. So they can kind of falsely make you believe that I fixed something, whereas I may have just filled it with some oil. With polishing, Jared's using a less abrasive pad here and actually using it to get out the haze that the compounding left. So after it's polished, what kind of things are you looking for? So I'm just looking to make sure that, you know, the clarity is there, there's no remaining haze. Um, you know, maybe a defect here and there that I missed along the way. Just, and just, uh, I mean, the main thing is to make sure it looks even. You don't want one area looking insanely good and then one area maybe a little duller than the, you know, or vice versa. But making sure I worked out that polish long enough that I could really, I can basically avoid that without you know, potentially causing any more work for myself. If I didn't cycle that polish out 
to its full potential, then there might be more work that I would have to do, but it looks good. As Jared waves the light over this, you can see that there are no swirls or blemishes in the paint. It's pretty insane what a good paint correction will do to a car. Typically after a paint correction, you'd want to use something like ceramic coating or paint protection film to protect what you've just corrected. Now I wanted to talk to Kevin and get some detail on what ceramic coating is actually doing in the car and how long it lasts. You know, I've, I've seen ceramic coating, I've heard of it, but, yeah. I, but I don't really understand exactly what it's doing for the car. Yeah, no, a lot of people are the same way with you. Like, yeah. it, especially before I did a ton of research into ceramic coatings, especially when they started to come to market, there's a yeah. ton of confusion, there still is. There's a lot of marketing out there that oh, it's this force field on a car, and it's yeah. certainly not. Um, what it really is providing is kind of the same benefits that you get out of like a wax or a sealant. So you got really nice ease of maintenance, so hydrophobics and getting water off the car. Um, chemicals and sap don't want to stick to it as much. Okay. But it's giving that long term, and it's a, a hard shell. It's a resin that hardens on the paint and bonds to the paint. So you're getting kind of like a sacrificial layer, uh, like a wax is, but a wax is a membrane. So okay. if you got a bird dropping and it, go, it sits on wax, right, and it, it etches way. through it, yeah. and it etches through that membrane, then it's in the paint. Whereas a ceramic coating, it can etch through the, that really top layer of the coating, and then there's still coating it beneath it. Okay, so I'm understanding that ceramic coating is basically a sacrificial layer on top of it, yeah. right? Something that would, would basically take the damage instead of your paint. Exactly, yeah. Cool. So, but does it affect the shine at all, or, or both in a positive or negative way? Yeah, um, really it's a, a positive way. I okay. mean, even after we do like a full paint correction polishing on a car and it's looking super shiny and gorgeous and it doesn't look like it can look any better, you put a ceramic on and you can immediately see a difference in reflectivity. Like it has that okay. really deep look to it. Um, and like you'll see as, as we apply on a panel, you'll see a, a, even if it's perfectly polished, a door that's not coated and like a fender that is coated, you'll, you'll notice like, oh, that the fender looks way better. So. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you for taking us around. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thanks for coming it. down. I'm, I'm glad. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. It's, it's definitely a factory. There's a, kind of a controlled chaos of everything yeah. going on. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that like button, the subscribe button. I'll catch you guys next time.